York's Classic Rock, Q1043. Well, it is such an honor to be able to pick the brain of a true pioneer of rock. Don't give me that look, Wayne Kramer, co-founder of MC5, radical activist. I share that with you in my background from teenagehood. Um, so the reason that Wayne Kramer has joined us is because we are all MC5, a somewhat reconfiguration of MC5 will be, well, they're on their first tour and um, they will be performing at Warsaw in Brooklyn a week from today. And your first full album since 1972 as MC5, well, kind of sort of MC5 is coming out in Rocktober. I tried to listen to the two tracks that were released, but I didn't have the code to get in. So I'm sorry. But first of all, why now? Why we are all MC5 in 2022 when MC5 blew up in 1970, 52 years ago, my God. Yeah, it's an extraordinary period of time between records. Um, <laughs> Maybe a record. That's the last thing my wife told me is turn my phone off. Okay. Okay. What does your phone ring anyway? What sound do you use? That was uh, Albert Eiler. Okay, why do I not know who that is? Oh, wait, who? Albert Eiler. Don't know who Albert Eiler is. He was one of the free jazz revolutionaries of the late 60s and early 70s that uh, were and continue to be so important to me. You know, there was a revolution in jazz led by uh, John Coltrane. Right. And uh, there was a whole group of musicians that were really trying to push jazz to the next level. And, um, uh, you know, that's a common occurrence in art. Each generation wants to find its own voice and its own sound. And, and these men and women were so committed uh, and courageous and inspiring to me that I owe them a debt of gratitude that I'll never fully be able to repay, to inspire me to do the work I did in, in launching the MC5 and, and trying to, to do what my heroes were doing, which was to push forward and find uh, new ways to say things and new ideas about how to be in the world that we live in and, and how to contribute our art um, uh, in a way that was meaningful to us. Um, they suffered um, severely for it. They were um, by the mostly white critics, the jazz establishment. Uh, and, you know, they, they couldn't, with some exceptions, they couldn't get records made. And ultimately they couldn't work you know, they starved for their commitment to a revolutionary form of jazz. Wow. And uh, uh, that's just, it, you know, I was of an age where I needed something of substance to grab onto, something that wouldn't decay with time. And I found it in the free jazz movement. So that's why Albert Eiler is my ringtone. Well, thank you for enlightening us. But of course, the same can be said for MC5, but before we go there, why now? Why we are all MC5 now? Because we're in a dangerous time, S serious, potentially catastrophic time in, in, our, in our nation, um, and uh, on, on the earth, you know, um, if, if we don't step up 
and um, find a voice and find a way to get active. I mean, the MC5 has represented action from the beginning. The, the, the underlying message that the MC5 carried is of possibilities and they only happen if you take action. Um, be in it with both feet, full measures, kick out the jams. Amen. Not, you don't pass out the jams or hand out the jams. You kick out the jams. It has passion. It has force to it. It has energy to it. And that's what we need now. If we don't um, find a way to succeed in the midterms and then in the presidential in 24, then all the things that we all love about living in America are going to go away. You know, our democracy does not have a special dispensation from God to protect it. We can fall just like a dozen banana republics fell, just like a dozen Eastern European sovereign nations fell to authoritarianism, autocrats, kleptocracies, and that's what we're up against. This is fascism at its purest form. I mean, people have asked me, well, is this like the 60s? No, this is like the 30s. You know, the Nazis took power with 30% of the population uh, following them. That's the exact same percentage that the religious fundamentalists, the Trumpists, uh, the Republicans have uh, right now. So okay, so you're listening for those who... Just tuned in. You're listening to Wayne Kramer. He is a co-founder of MC5. We are all MC5 uh, performing for the first time since 1970. Well, MC5. And uh, they'll be coming to um, Warsaw in Brooklyn a week from today. Now, you were talking about your inspiration musically, one of your inspirations. And I said the same could be said of MC5. Now, if I, I had to describe MC5 back in the day, you formed when you were, what, 15 years old with Fred Smith. And the sound of Kick Out the Jams could have been released today, and I would call it punk but what would how would you describe mc5 the term we used was high energy that uh, that the music that inspired me uh you know uh gut bucket rhythm and blues and and uh, james brown and the free jazz revolutionaries of the 60s um music that moved me physically um, I always, I could always describe it as being high energy. You know, Bobby Vinton didn't inspire me. <laughs> no, no kidding. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, James Brown did. John Coltrane did. So, yeah, I mean, you know, in the MC5s, in the original version of the MC5, you know, if you call someone a punk, that meant we we're going to have a fist fight in a minute. That, that I get that that definition has evolved and today there's great pride in being punk. And in that sense, uh, of course I'm a punk. <laughs> okay, all right. You kind of hold a record here when it comes to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. MC5 has been nominated six times. Now, not inducted yet. And of course we're getting it at the end of the fan vote this week. Chaka Khan nominated seven times and uh, the Sheik nominated 11 times. What does this mean to you if you get in to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year in 2022, Wayne? I just think at this point, I've, I've exhausted all the cynicism I had, all the critical uh, analysis of the Hall of Fame and I would just be happy and and think that it would be nice, you know. It would be a a confirmation for all the fans of the band that have stood with us all these years, and it'd be nice to have the 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 rock establishment recognize the contribution that the MC5 has made to to uh, the community. 
of course, it, it would be a, a poignant induction because the only two people left are you and, and drummer Dennis Thompson, who, by the way, joins you on two of those tracks for yes. your upcoming album, which is very exciting. But how does that feel that you you survived and by all rights, you could have been dead because of the drug addiction. And how do how do you wrap your head around that? Why do you think you're still here? Do you have more to complete? What what do you think about that? I think my mother loved me enough, instilled enough in me, enough love, enough affection that I never really wanted to destroy myself. Uh, my behavior was certainly self-destructive for decades, but I never woke up in the morning and dreaded the day, no matter how bad my hangover was or my circumstances. I always have, have met the day with enthusiasm and an appreciation for breathing in and out. Do you ever feel Fred Smith with you? Do you ever feel Roy with you? We lost both of them to heart attacks at way too early ages. Of course, you don't, you don't, you don't grow up with, you know, other people and, and bond together at the, to the degree that we bonded. Uh, as young men and then face the challenges we faced together and endured what we endured to be able to walk away from that. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they show up in my dreams all the time. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, they're never very far away from me. They never will be. Are you in touch uh, quite a bit with Patty Smith? Not at all. Really? Did you have a falling out? Is there something I don't know here? No, we didn't have a falling out. I don't think we ever, we were never friends. Oh, okay. All right. So what have you been doing with yourself? I mean, I know in the 90s, you know, you were, you came back musically, but what, what has Wayne Kramer been doing? 13 years ago, I launched in partnership with my wife, Margaret, and the great British troubadour, Billy Bragg, Jail Guitar Doors USA. We use the transformative power of creativity in America's prisons to help people express complex ideas non-confrontationally. Uh, through the process of songwriting, we can help people find a way to collaborate with people that they wouldn't normally hang out with, um, communicate effectively. Um, we provide musical instruments in prisons. We, our instruments and our programs are in over 160 American prisons. Uh, and in the last seven or eight years, we've been working with young people here in Los Angeles in the County Probation Department camps. They call them camps. Um, they're not camps, they're prisons for children. And this, we use the same tools, music, songwriting, to help these young people find alternatives to spending their adult lives in the criminal justice prison system. Um, we've just recently, over the last year, built a youth center, uh, physically built it uh, here in Los Angeles. It has a complete recording studio, a computer lab, classroom space, performance space where we have hip hop dance classes and, and we have um, DJ events and uh, uh, um, we can have meetings and have speaker events. Uh, we did one on Saturday with Raul Pacheco, the leader of Ozo Motley, and he talked with our, our kids about what it's like to, you know, be in a band for 25 years and tour the world and the challenges and the pressures. Um, I'm raising a eight-year-old boy. Awesome. I score film and television for a living. Um, 
you know, I'm, I wrote a new record. I'm writing the, the next record now. Uh, I'm getting ready to go back on tour. I try to be a good husband and a good boss and a good student. And still optimistic. Again, uh, we've reached the end of the show. I'm sorry. We are all MC5 performing a week from today at Warsaw in Brooklyn. And here's what's really weird, because I didn't plan it this way. I had no idea you were involved in prisons and bringing music to, to that population. But coming up next, I'm speaking with the leader of the Innocence Project, uh, which, yeah, which is yeah. all about freeing wrongfully convicted people, freeing them with DNA. That's coming up next. It all comes together. The Yiddish word for that, that is beshert. So that's coming up next, Q104.3.